inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle and whose sides are made up of chords. So for example, that would be this. I'll call this A, C, B. So angle A, C, B is inscribed. And as we just noticed, the measure of an inscribed angle is equal to half the measure of the arc it intercepts. So what that means in this particular case is that the measure of angle ACB is going to be one half the measure of arc AB. And that's always going to be true. So in the context of some examples, if I know that an intercepted arc is 74 degrees, here, this arc is 74, then the measure of the angle inscribed within that arc would have to be half of 74. So x is 1 half of 74 degrees, or more simply, x is 37 degrees. So this gives me a way of finding the missing values. Vice versa, if I know the angle is 42, then 42 is one half the intercepted arc, which in this case is x, so that x is 2 times 42, or 84 degrees. Okay. We'll also have instances where sometimes we'll have to put different parts together. So in this case, I have a central angle of 100 degrees, meaning that the measure of its intercepted arc is also 100 degrees, and the measure of the inscribed angle, x, would be half that 100, so that x is 50 degrees. Okay, so our two angle relationships that we've talked about thus far is that central angles are exactly equal to the measure of the arc, and inscribed angles are half the measure of their intercepted arc. Now we can also use um, other ideas related to circles in order to help us in solving for missing angles and missing arcs. One idea that is sometimes helpful for getting information is the fact that congruent chords will cut congruent arcs. Now this is an idea that we'll actually prove in class, um, but for now we're going to show you how to use that in the context of this example. One other thing that we talk about sometimes with inscribed angles are inscribed figures, such as an inscribed triangle. In this example, it says that triangle ABC is inscribed in circle O, such that the following relationships are true. Well, an inscribed figure is basically a figure whose vertices all fall on the circle, or whose vertices all form inscribed angles. So if you notice in the diagram, triangle A B, C, each of the vertices of that triangle form inscribed angles. That's what it means for a figure to be inscribed in a circle. With the rest of the given information, I know that the measure of angle B is 70, which means that the measure of arc AC, the arc which that angle of 70 degrees is inscribed within, would have to be double that which is 140. I know that arc BC is 100, which means that the arc, or I'm sorry, the angle inscribed within that arc would have to be half that, which makes it 50 degrees. And then to find the remaining bit, I know that the sum of the angles inside of a triangle are 180, so 70 plus 50 is 120. And if I subtract that 120, from 180, I'll get the missing angle, which is 60 degrees. So this must be 60, which means that the arc which this angle is inscribed in, right here, would need to be double that, which is 120 degrees. One check for ourselves is that we know that the sum of the angles or some of the arcs within a circle is 360, and if I add 100, 120, and 140 together, I do get 360, so that's a check. So when I go to answer these questions, now that I've solved each of these bits, 
the measure of AC is 140, the measure of A is 50, the measure of angle C is 60, and the measure of arc AB is 120. In number five, since this chord is congruent to this chord, the arcs that they cut, namely this one and this one, will be congruent to each other using this theorem. So since this one is 135, this arc will also be 135 degrees. Well, since any circle contains 360 degrees, and I've already accounted for 2 times 135 of them, and 2 times 135 is 270. If I take that 270 out of that 360 degrees, I'll be left with 90 degrees, meaning that the measure of the remaining arc must be 90, so that these three arcs will add up to the 360 degrees of the whole circle. Well, if this arc is 90, and X is an inscribed angle, meaning its vertex is on the circle, then X would have to be one half of that 90 degrees, which is 45 degrees. So we can use theorems like this to help us in more quickly solving circle questions. Sometimes we'll notice that theorems can actually follow from observations we make while solving. For example, in number six, I have circle O, center of circle O, and I have this inscribed angle X. Well, angle X, if I follow its sides, is inscribed within the following arc. And since this arc is cut by a diameter, it makes it a semicircle. And a semicircle, or half a circle, is a 180 degree arc. Well, that would mean that X would be half of that 180, which is 90 degrees. And recall that 90 degrees is a right angle. That means that any time I have a angle inscribed within a semicircle, it's going to have to be a right angle. Now, that's another theorem that we can use to help us more quickly solve circle examples in the future. One more such observation we could make is that, say, I have two angles inscribed within the same angle. So here I have an arc of 80 degrees. Angle Y is inscribed within that 80, meaning that angle Y would have to be 40 degrees. Angle X is inscribed within that exact same arc of 80 degrees, meaning that X would have to be half that, which is 40 as well. Well, this kind of gives us a clue that Anytime I have two angles inscribed within the same arc, those two angles are going to have to be equal to each other or congruent. So that gives us another theorem that we can use in future examples. Two inscribed angles of a circle which intercept the same arc will be congruent to each other.